Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. This is Hey DIY Knitting Podcast where me, Heidi, does some DIY, mostly knitting. And today we have a shit ton of finished objects because it has been a while um, since I have last done the whips and FOs episode. So bear with me, there is a lot of finished objects. Uh, some of them are from August and some of them are from September. And there are also a couple of new whips that I'm gonna show you. Grab your knitting or whatever craft you have and some coffee or tea or drink of your choice and we'll jump in. I just need to make my coffee first much better so finished objects and i was thinking let's go chronologically from oldest to newest and first we have helle sleepover and i'm a bit embarrassed but i still have not woven in all the ends and therefore I have not worn this, which makes me sad. So I need to do it this week. I will give myself, myself a challenge and make it. But yeah, it looks like this. So they are completely separate uh, pieces and you tie them at the sides. It has this beautiful texture. It is from doing half brioche, half, half fisherman's rib. And I absolutely love knitting it. I think it is so fun and engaging and it goes very quickly, in my opinion. Someone, some people say that it is very slow, but for me it is very quick because it is so engaging. And it is lovely and the texture is so nice the fabric feels lovely i used two different plant fibers and the other one was pure cotton it was actually wait a second um this one uh, rico design essentials cotton dk and very ugly <laughs> ball of yarn uh, which I bought second hand and it is lovely. And the other one was Isager 301 and it was in this beautiful chestnut shade. And the fact that they are plant fibers makes me not want to weave in the ends. Uh, as you can see, this is slightly sheer fabric. It is a bit uh, see-through. And I'm thinking that if I weave in the ends, it's going to show in the final result. And I'm not so happy about that. And I'm also scared that it's not going to last and the ends are going to poke from some random holes. And yeah, please, if you have experience on cotton or other plant fiber yarns and weaving in the ends, leave some tips down below i would really appreciate it and yeah i'm gonna do it this week i promise it to myself uh, so i get to wear it with my autumn outfits i was thinking it would look very nice with a crisp white shirt and some jeans so this was the first finished object have a zip and after the hell slipover which was actually from Sangeskan if I didn't remember to say that after that I finished the Rocky Road pullover by Kudelmiani which is a lovely Finnish designer called Suvi and here is my finished Rocky Road sweater. 
It is so large, <laughs> it is hard to show you. So, this was knit in Knitting for Olive Heavy Merino, which was kindly gifted to me by Anna ja Eila, my lovely local yarn store. Uh, if you are in Finland, I highly recommend. So this was my first attempt at Intarja. And I think this is a pretty good job for a beginner in Intarja. So first project. And it was actually quite a suitable project for a beginner, I think. Instructions were written very clearly and um, it is very simple Intarja motif, I think. And I love the colors, the soft blues are really speaking to me right now. So I have two shades of this soft blue. The darker one is deep petroleum blue and the lighter one is dusty petroleum blue. And the base color is called marzipan. And the Anna and Ayla actually made a Hades Choice package on their website. They have these different uh, color packages of the heavy merino uh, for this sweater. So if you are local to me or uh, want to order uh, in Finland, go check them out so you can make your own Rocky Road sweater. I made a accidental <laughs> modification. Um, because somehow I made the pack, back piece, well, this much longer. This is knit in pieces, it's totally flat and then seamed, which means when I measured the different parts, um, my the upper part of this sweater is a bit shorter than it should be. But it still fits me and I still got the proper amount of sleeve stitches, so it ended up being okay in the end. And I decided to do a split because the <laughs> otherwise the seam would have not matched. That would have looked very stupid. I wanted the intarsia pattern to match, so I sewed it from top down. And it ended up matching quite well, and I think I did quite a great job uh, with the seaming, even though it is not my favorite thing to do. And I have great news. Um, Kudelmiani Suvi is actually making a top-down version on the round for this pattern, and uh, she's gonna translate that pattern in English later on. So I know there have been many people on my comments on Instagram and here that they would really enjoy making this, but they don't speak Finnish. So we're gonna translate it in the English version. And I'm happy that you guys get to knit this one as well, if you'd like. It is cozy, it is like a hug and I really enjoy wearing it. Yeah, that was my second finished object. And those were actually finished on August, but I have not filmed Whips and FOs episode for a while. So, so then we are in September and I have started my capsule wardrobe knits and that means that uh, the next couple of finished objects are from my uh, capsule collection, if you would uh, like to say so. And if you have not watched my knitted capsule wardrobe episode, you can check it somewhere here. So the first one that I started immediately when I had space on my needles and even if I didn't have I started um, anyway and it is my storm sweater and it is 
beautiful. I love it so much. Oh, just look at that texture. It is so pretty. I used the Woolenit British Wool 4-ply comb and it was in the shade Oatmeal, uh, which is this beautiful something between grey and beige. It is a bit more grey, but it is still not like very cool grey, if you know what I mean. Um, and I <laughs> ran out of yarn. Um, or kind of. I, I finished the sweater and I used every single bit of yarn I had. This is all I have left. Like this much. <laughs> um, so yeah, I used all of the 500 gram cone. And I would have wanted a tiny bit longer cuffs. I really do enjoy long cuffs that go, go to my knuckles and I can roll them if I want. And if I need to do some stuff, I can just roll them up. But yeah, this is still okay length. So it is around my wrist. So it's not too short technically, but I would have wanted it to be longer. And I actually blocked this twice already. I finished this actually while I was on the car ride to my parents. And immediately when we got back from there, I put this to the bath for a little while and then blocked and went to sleep. And the next day I tried it on and realized the sleeves are kind of short. And I don't think the stitches had time to relax on the bath because I just basically made it wet and put it to the blocking mat. So I put it on the bath again. And this time I used <laughs> actually dish soap. Uh, I learned this from Crea Bea Knitting Podcast. Uh, also known as Rebecca. She said that these more toothy rustic wools can be washed with uh, dish soap, so it makes it um, a bit more soft and relaxed. And this definitely feels softer now. Uh, I was a bit worried about the rusticness because my skin is kind of sensitive, especially around the neck. Um, but I think this might be okay. Uh, which brings me to the neck band. I did a slightly, slightly um, narrower neck band, and I might have to do it again because, as you can see, it is a bit twisted. I don't know how it happened because I was actually very careful when I was picking up stitches and knitting the neck neckband. Um, but somehow I got it a bit twisted. It goes a bit like diagonally and I want to fix that. I'm just gonna try it on first and see if it itches too much and how tall are the sleeves. Because if I decide that this is too itchy for my neck, I might try to find something a bit more soft in a similar color and just do the neck band and the sleeve cuffs on that softer material. So it's more comfortable to wear. But I would like it to be exactly <laughs> the same color, so I do realize there is a problem with that since it is very hard to find an exact color match in a different brand. But we will see and I will try it on again and if this is okay then I will just redo it with the yarn I have here 
literally here on the neck band and hopefully not twist it again but yeah i love it i i just it it makes it makes my autumn better to have this kind of sweater <laughs> Oh yeah, and I did an accidental modification here as well. I was a bit too tired uh, when I was knitting these uh, front pieces. So I accidentally did this one a bit taller than it should be. Uh, so this is probably from the size large or extra, extra large and I need the size small, but it just makes the uh, neck opening a bit bigger, so it doesn't really bother me at all. And it still fits great, and I love it, so it really doesn't matter. Cheers! I feel like I am running through these projects because there is so many, and I don't want to edit a two hour long video because <laughs> it is a lot of work and yeah it is a lot of work i hope it doesn't feel too rushed for you and let's jump into the next one the next project that was finished was a test knit for knitonomy Magdalena, lovely Magdalena, and this is the Minto tea. And it is looking like this. And this is one of the favorite things I have ever made. It's perfect combination of soft merino and cotton and it drapes very nicely and I love the stitch pattern. It is just gorgeous to die for. And just look at the stitch definition. I, I, I am speechless, it is, it is lovely. Um, so I finished this last week and the pattern should be going live soon. I don't know what to say. I used around 230 grams of fingering weight yarn in the size small and I used Yertekan Lana Cotton in this lovely uh, graphite gray color. It is a bit softer than black uh, but it's, it is still has kind of the same classic effect. And I, I, I just adore the Minto cables because as I have said I get bored easily but I'm also not enjoying the patterns that have that kind of uh, stitch patterns that you have to look all the time. So this is actually perfect. <laughs> you have variation, but you also have repetition. So almost every round something happens and it is just uh, so engaging and fun to my brain. So if there is other ADHD or otherwise neuro spicy um, viewers, this might be a pattern for you. I did this to a pattern only that I did a half a repeat longer body. I love the fit, I love the fabric, I love the cables and yeah. I think it is perfect. I have already worn it many times during this week. Uh, I wore it to knit night. I wore it just 
at home after taking pictures because it was so comfy. And yeah, I am kind of on a roll with these Minto patterns because I'm already planning on making uh, another Minto, but I will making I will be making the Minto sweater, which is a thicker version with long sleeves. And I'm excited about that as well. Perfect textured cabled t-shirt and it is just so nice that it doesn't even need anything to go with it. You just this and jeans, maybe a belt and it is gorgeous. Another test knitter from the group, uh, Alona, just styled this beautifully and she also just started a knitting channel. So if you would like to give her a follow, she would probably appreciate that. But yeah, this is my Minto tea and I am super proud and super happy about it. And that means I have done two pieces from my capsule wardrobe. And there are a couple more on my needles. One more finished object, or should I say finished objects, because these are socks. Um, the other one is plugged. This is not, but I just... These have been hanging on my needles for so long that I just wanted to finish them. These are kind of the Summer Girl socks by Sari Nordland. I was a tester for these. It was a very <laughs> like two week or one week span to knit one sock and I made it and I cast on the next sock, but it took me many months <laughs> to knit the other one. And as you can see, or you might remember, there should be this kind of frill uh, on the sock. And I made it for the first one, which is this blocked one. But I ended up unraveling it because I realized that I do enjoy more streamlined socks for the most part. I wear them on my boots and uh, I just think that I will get more wear out of very streamlined socks. And also because the color is so like uh, girly and I don't know, bubbly maybe, um, I just felt that they were like overly girly for my liking so i ended up going with this and i really do enjoy this detail of the folded folded cuff and the combination with this speckled yarn it is just really pretty colorway it is from the um, Advent set a couple of years ago by Moku Yarn. It is a white base that has a lot of different pinks, uh, greens and oranges, maybe a tiny bit of lilac. And it is so cute. I love it. And I'm actually in need of basic socks because mine are quite um, they have seen better days, let's just say that. So this will come at a perfect time. So this was the pile of finished knits. And I just want to say that don't feel pressure or feel like you should be able to make more. This is maybe two and a half months of work. And I was on medical leave and on part-time medical leave during this time. So I had more time to knit than most people do. So be gentle to yourself and 
try to enjoy the knitting process. There is no rush to create. So let's jump into the whips section of this video and let's go with the same format from oldest to the newest. This has been on my needle since spring um, but it has taken time off at times and now it is back and this is the cherry dress from Sonnesgarn and it is currently looking like this. So I have sleeves on hold here and maybe 10, 12 centimeters of the body. And this is the kind of knit I knit when I am on knit night or having coffee with a friend or when my child plays and I am sitting next to her or when I go outdoors or when I travel or go to the therapy, I need this because <clears throat> as I said earlier, I get bored very easily and this kind of knitting is usually very boring extremely boring to me uh, when I just knit round and round but it is good when I don't have to focus on it and I can just talk or listen to something or do that kind of stuff. It's also good knitting when I have no brain capacity left to do more complicated stuff and yeah, there is um, not much to tell rather than I will just knit a long tube <laughs> and then bind off at some point. I will probably knit this uh, ball of yarn and do the sleeves after so I can visualize how it's gonna look when it's ready. I'm not sure about the neckband. It looks a bit floppy. Uh, I'll probably try to insert elastic first and if it doesn't work I will cut it off and do a new version of the folded neckband. But yeah, the fabric is so soft and lovely. This is gonna be like a soft hug and it is so lovely. I'm using uh, Sun is Gone Sunday and Thin Silk Mohair. And it's gonna be beautiful. I'm gonna be a walking raspberry <laughs> with this one. Uh, but it is a lovely color. There is no rush to finish this one. It is just thing I knit when I have nothing else to knit or do. The next one I hadn't even started the last time, but it is almost finished. I think I will finish it today or tomorrow. And it is the May Camisole by Creadia Studio. And it looks like this at the moment. Yay! So I am at the point where I start to make the split on the hem and that is not a lot of knitting. It is like around five centimeters. And after that, I am done. And it is again, this beautiful raspberry color. It is very similar <laughs> to the Sonnescar one. But this is Sachenmeyer's Tencel Merino Blend. And as you can see, it has this lovely sheen to the yarn. This is probably the most interesting construction I have ever made in a camisole. Uh, but I 
probably cannot tell too much since it is a paid for pattern but it is started actually in the middle here and that's probably all i can say and there is a subtle line especially here on the back but i think it will block out i'm using the recommended needles this is four millimeters and these ribbings are done on 2.5 millimeter and that is why they are so neat and beautiful i think this will be such a versatile piece when it's done and i just love the attention to detail with these uh, lines in here i must say this has been such a quick and enjoyable knit i started it a week ago and now it's almost done and i have knitted other things as well so it's not like i have been knitting only only this one i think it will be beautiful and i have truly enjoyed the experience so i highly recommend the may camisole pattern and the last but not least or maybe the least actually is the waffle loop skirt by other loops because <laughs> i'm not very far in my in my knitting with this one because i made the folded uh, what is it called waistband and then i needed to buy another set of needles since the pattern calls for 4.5 millimeter needles and i don't have them and i'm probably gonna finish the may camisole before continuing with this one but here's the idea how it's gonna look like so imagine this plus some textured knitting after this one and kind of like a pencil skirt type of thing i'm having this finnish alpaca and wool blend and i think it's gonna be beautiful for a skirt it has some structure but it's still a bit drapey because of the alpaca here's a small opening so i can insert an elastic because this probably will stretch over time and i want it to be snug on the waist so it doesn't uh, roll down or fall because nobody wants a falling skirt or at least i don't so there's actually not that much to talk about with this one but just so you know it is coming and if you want to see the process of knitting this one or my other new cast-ons you can jump on to my instagram which is hedi with the underscores and i will post more of the process uh, things over there and can i just highlight the cuteness that my daughter made she made me a stitch marker and she is five she likes everything very cutesy and pink she originally wanted to make earrings but i'm not gonna wear earrings with watermelons so stitch markers it is and now i can remember her every time i knit something i think it was or is very cute maybe we should just sit and knit and chat for a bit i'm not gonna take my knit right now because well i could knit the dress 
but I just want to talk, you know, and have some coffee while it's still warm. Ish. And yeah, just a small life update. I have gone back to work. Um, I started with like 50% work time and um, it has gone well and it has not been very busy on September but uh, actually this week I have a lecture or a webinar that I'm hosting. I'll be talking about stress and regulating your nervous system and that sort of stuff so stress management which is <laughs> it's a bit like do what i say not what i do since i'm recovering from burnout but yeah my burnout was not due to working it was more about the general life stuff and health stuff that was becoming very overwhelming. Uh, but yeah, that is uh, this week. And I also have a work trip on Friday. So this week is a bit more busy than usual, but next week is again with my regular tasks. Yeah, it's good to have this kind of routine on everyday life. And I'm excited about the upcoming fall. It's already quite uh, autumnal here. The trees are starting to change colors and it's getting cooler, especially in the morning and in the evening. There has been some warmer days, but it's getting cooler and I'm excited <laughs> about it. Some of you might follow me on Instagram and you know that I had quite a bad summer health-wise. Um, summer heat is really not good for me. It makes all of my health conditions worse. So I'm starting to recover from that since it's not that hot anymore and I can go outside more and I am trying to take care of myself and move and eat regularly and focus on recovery and sleep. I feel quite excited and balanced right now and I hope that it continues this autumn and I don't go overboard with all my projects knitting wise and in life wise. Um, because I have noticed that having a couple of projects at a time, it just makes things a lot easier and more calm and not so overwhelming. I am trying not to have test knits this autumn because I'm focusing on my capsule wardrobe stuff. But if there is something wonderful comes across, I might consider, but I'm trying not to. Uh, it just brings me a bit more flexibility on the creating and uh, assures that it doesn't become another chore when it's meant to be something that is relaxing and Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please tell me what you are making or what is inspiring you at the moment. Leave it on the comments and remember to like and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. Have a lovely week and I hope to see you soon. Bye!